Hello everyone, it's Alphilion Marauder, and welcome back. Um, instead of doing a Nuremberg video, which I'm still kind of uh, working out, today I thought we'd do something a little bit unique, and actually go over a replay. This is a replay of my uh, clanmate Boob McNuggets uh, ranked match in an A-gear. Now the interesting thing about A-gear is that for the most part, people consider her to be a... I would say less capable ba uh, battle cruiser, even though it takes up the cruiser slot, mainly because of kind of how it's designed at this tier. It's kind of seen as an inferior, oversized, mutated uh, graph spay that doesn't get any of the benefits and in many ways kind of actually has a quite a bit of few drawbacks. A very tall freeboard, an armor scheme that is pretty, pretty all right, but... Um, not as great as her, I guess, lower tier counterpart. The secondaries are okay for a cruiser. She does have torps. The AA suite is average at best. But the gunnery on the ship is not considered to be phenomenal. And sometimes the shell performance can spit back at you in your face. And that's not really appreciated by a lot of captains. And to take one into ranked requires a lot of concentration. And you to actually kind of know a little bit about what you're doing especially when you look at the enemy team lineup. Uh, this is not, in terms of who has the displacement of the better ships, this is not in his favor. The enemy team has the better lineup with an Alaska over his A-gear, uh, Brindisi over, their buff over his Buffalo, a Belfast over their Harbin, a Friesland over their Fletcher, and Lightning over their Akizuki. Um, by all accounts, this should be a loss, but... It doesn't actually go that way. It ends up being a win. We'll see why here in a second. Um, after a first early island avoiding and early shots out on Frieza, just pause shots to see where they're going, um, opens up the match with Alaska taking going towards A and the Brindisi going towards C. And it's kind of interesting. You'll see how this starts out here because in about a minute, we're going to see three ships get wiped off the field and almost begin to start to change the momentum of the match early shots there on the Brindisi go out from his A gear and lightning now appears next to that Fletcher which isn't too hot for the Fletcher we'll see that in about just a second here um, he is way in over his head and there's nothing that boom functionally is really able to do to help his Fletcher out um, Belfast there is taking that island corner blind shots going over the island there uh, Fletcher's not in a great spot as you can see now the Belfast has joined in on him and that's just as a Fletcher not where you want to be and especially for a ranked match just once again not what you should expect and Friesland puts him out of the match early which is not phenomenal um, Harbin ends up pick cleaning up their Friesland making it a bit of a trade but then Brindisi takes out the Buffalo which is a critical radar needed throughout the match so now that you've lost your radar and the enemy has one on a pretty tanky vessel uh, via the Alaska, yeah, this doesn't look too hot for the uh, for his team. Now, luckily though, Brindisi decides to show a little bit of broadside, and Boom sneaks in his last turret there, and sadly five over pens, but a full pen, and racks up some decent damage just in general from you know the amassment of shell hits, and Brindisi now is forced to kind of turn away. However, now that C is taken, and while that's great, it is now Harbin versus an Alaska in a 1v1, knowing exactly who's going to lose that, it's going to be the Harbin. And B cap has now been dogpiled on, with an Azumo walking in a range. And sure enough, Harbin ends up going down. Um, the Azumo is kind of getting in a range there, and then BAM! A broadside smack, triple Citadel on Brindisi for 28k. And this is where this flank kind of begins to turn around, because if you're a Brindisi, you just receive that. You're not too happy. And sure enough here, you got more shells going out. And unfortunately, though, because of A gear's wonky AP characteristics, five ricochets, which is annoying because that was on upper belts that normally would be smashed through. However, Rupert ends up killing and cleaning up that Brindisi. And this eliminates any more torp threat that A gear could be seeing for just a little while. However, Lightning is still not spotted as of this time. 
Now what's interesting enough is that instead of the Azumo taking on the Aegir and isolating him in a 1v1, which might have actually put Aegir out of the match and and made this a victory for um, Izumo's team, Boom is lucky because the Azumo doesn't know what the hell he's doing and is looking away from what is one of the bigger threats in the match. Lightning then starts to start to challenge the Akizuki, which is also not phenomenal for his team because Akizuki probably does not want to be in the middle of fighting a Lightning at this point in the match, especially with the HP differences. Rupert is forced to charge B despite any of the hazards because this is a now or never situation. Um, Boom decides to retarget the Lightning instead of targeting on Izumo because Lightning is now at this point the bigger threat on the field. And boom, Aegir gets the Lightning, taking him out of the match and saving the Destroyer long enough to what you'll see here is a very important play. Now, Azumo is now beautifully broadside to the Aegir, and this is something that any cruiser in this tier is going to salivate over because of the beauty of the stat distance in that broadside. And a pretty good 10k chunk, not obviously the big damage number you're looking for, but still uh, got five digits on that, so there's nothing really to complain a lot about. Um, the uh, Rupert has gone down, so now it is a 2v3, and if you look at the top of the screen here, their capital ships are pretty well intact. The Alaska is almost at full health, Azumo is doing pretty well, and the Belfast is doing pretty well. But if you look out of the corner, corner in the screen here, around the D8 quadrant, you see Akizuki is uh, sneaking back into range here. And more importantly, there's island clearance, meaning that Akizuki is able to launch torpedoes. And as you can see, there they are, swimming away. And that is an Izumo that's straight linusing straight into those torps. And this is going to be a massive uh, momentum swing for the egg gear. Because there's so much here that is available for him to now capitalize on. Because he doesn't have to deal with the battleship. Because boom, even though he loses the Aki, Azumo is hurting. Can't DCP. All the dot damage catches up to him. Akazuki bags the kill, even though Belfast took down the Akazuki. So now it is an A gear versus a Belfast in Alaska. And this still looks pretty hopeless, right? Now I know I spoiled at the beginning and said this was going to end up being a win, but. Most situations, regardless, you'd consider this to kind of be already chalked up as a loss. I mean, your A gear is pretty pretty outnumbered here compared to stronger vessels. And thanks to Alaska not making a solid of a hit as probably the Alaska would hope, um, A gear ends up getting out of that pretty scot-free, and a couple shell hits give him a high caliber. Meanwhile, uh, Belfast underestimates his ability to smoke up quick enough. Really hard. That is something you don't want to do in a Belfast. Uh, you want to be a little more bow in or nose into something, or have be at quarter speed before you smoke so that you don't have to run out of it. And a blind shot, because you know for a fact that Belfast is slowing to a stop. Boom. Done. Belfast is out of the match. But this still does not address the problem of the Alaska, who is now continuing to just still beat on him and those 4k hits add up pretty quick so at this point even though he has a pretty uh, supportive team with a give someone giving a plus one to where you're here boom has to make a play and alaska is letting the distance close and to a point you can understand why someone would want to you want i guess a more accurate shot to quickly put him out of the match and that that can be appreciated but at the same time, if a ship has torpedoes, this is the last move, especially in a ranked, that you want to do. And giving someone broadside like that, you know, just because your citadel is harder to hit, doesn't mean you still can't take casemate damage. And that's what the uh, Alaskan is experiencing here. A gear gets one of his turrets damaged temporarily, but once again, those torps go out. And Alaska is going to eat one of those. Boom. And wake like that, with some careful maneuvering and bow on play, Alaska now finds itself in a very even fight to that of the Aegir. And Aegir secondary is now coming to play with him cranking those up. And Alaska continues once again to show broadside and is getting pelted by secondaries, what have you. Uh, Alaska keeps hitting Aegir's belt at an angle, which does not help. And for the most part, as you can see here, Aegir puts him away. Alright everyone, so instead of any more speculation on the match, 
we actually have the man here himself for a guest interview. Here's our Aegir driver, Boom McNugget. Boom, thank you for being able to be here to comment on your match. No problem. Thanks for having me. All right, Boom. So, first question right out of the gate. How do you build your Aegir? All right. Um, well, I think the first place to start is just with the hard modules. Um, I build my A gear like I build uh, some of my German battleships. Um, so I'm going for a bit more survivability with the build. Um, and trying to maximize, honestly, some of the subpar ballistics of the ship. But uh, for my first module slot, I go with uh, main arms, uh, second, uh, damage control, uh, third, uh, aim system mods, uh, fourth, damage control two, got to put out them fires because you burn like a battleship, um, uh, then fourth, concealment, and then, uh, that's not fourth, that's fifth, if only I could count, um, and then sixth is reload, uh, I've seen arguments, and there definitely is an argument to be made, um, instead of running reload to run range, uh, just because your range, your base range has got awful. Um, but I find with ranked and how I play the ship and how I think the ship should be played based on how it performs, um, reload is the most workable option. Um, so I guess on to captain build, I have uh, my boy Gunter Luchens. Um, yeah, obviously not a complete build yet because Luchens is still level 19. Uh, a bit of a sh shame on me, but uh, he's my highest level uh, German commander at the moment, so he gets to run my Aegir. Um, so again, just a, this is actually, he's the main line. Uh, he's tr currently trained for my rune. He's going to go on the Hindenburg when I get it. Um, but obviously it's sort of a handy build, but that can mostly work on, uh, Aegir because Hindenburg is sort of also a battleship. Um, so you get, uh, Grease the Gears, which, uh, is improved with Gunter Luchens. Uh, and you got, uh, Ammo Feeder, lets you swap for them pesky DDs. Uh, Demolition Expert, which, honestly, not too useful, but again... Uh, Hindenburg build. Um, uh, priority target lets you know how many people are trying to kill you. Uh, AR, just because AR is like basically god mode. Um, then the one that decreases your uh, reload when you're in a brawl. And then uh, Concealment Expert, so that allows you to get at least a little bit closer before people find out what you're trying to do and try to stop you. Um, for the rest of the points, um, I'm thinking either superintendent or heavy AP shells, um, just cause AP shell damage alpha, always good to have. If you can have more, do it. Um, but at the same time, the fourth heal and the fourth hydro can come in. That's like game changing in some instances. So I'm going to have to do some testing for those to see which one I pick up. But uh, I'll have one point left, and that's probably just going to go on incoming fire alert. So all in all, that's my build. All right. So that's some very uh, good insight on your build, and I do appreciate some of the perspective you shared with that. But just out of curiosity, what makes you want to bring an A gear into ranked? All right. Um, I think the A gear um, is sort of one critically underrated but it's an amazing ship if you try to maximize the stuff that it does well um if you play it exactly like a battleship you know sometimes open water trying to shoot things across the map you're going to get screwed and you're going to be back in port before you know it um however i found that agar pushing in especially isolated one-on-one -on -one duels like you saw me take with the Brindisi, um, that's it's just peak. There's it functions as a battleship if a battleship had torpedoes, and could drive at some reasonable speed and turn well. 
I guess. Um, yeah, the dueling, dueling in this battleship is everything. And that's why I bring it to ranked. I mean, because ranked, you could isolate one-on-one -on -one fights. I mean, even cru cruisers, it easy. Like Brindisi, I barely broke a sweat. Um, the Azumo, I mean, battleships, as long as you're not fighting two of them at once, it's pretty manageable. Especially with the torpedoes, you just got to be smart about how you get into torpedo range. Um, and even when ships are running away, just pointing your bow, um, even angling just a tad to bait them to shoot your sides um, is amazing. And again, one-on-ones, within reason, I mean, you're not trying to duel like a Ruprecht or something, um, is perfect. It's perfect in this ship. So, many people have different goals when they go to play ranked. Some of them play it because it's different than random. Some play it for the steel rewards. Some play it just to get the shiny badge of how far in ranked you've made it. For you, what is your goal in ranked? So, I feel like it's a combination of a lot of those things, but mainly uh, the matchmaker is different. Um, six on six at tier nine. German, German, anything really in the current meta, especially the battleships, maybe the battle cruisers, but especially the battleships just do not work with matchmaker. Um, too much long range HE just kill you instantly. Um, but uh, ranked uh, when there's smaller team rosters, um, people pushing in more. Uh, the one-on-one -on -one fights those happen all the time in ranked like that is where the ship performs so in randoms not amazing but if you play ranked the ship does really well and i obviously like doing well um then there's the steel aspect i mean steel man i need steel it's like an addiction um and the shiny badge i mean gotta tell all the non-existent women in my life about how i'm uh what silver 10 in rank all right so at the start of the match uh ranked teams can be kind of dubious in this case did you have any confidence in your team i mean with ranked matches while the roster is smaller and that's good um that also means teammates individual decisions affect the match a lot more than in randoms um, so, like a Fletcher trying to contest the B-cap and get himself killed uh, immediately uh, right out of the gate, uh, that has long-term match effects across the entire game. Instead of one of four in random destroyers getting killed, uh, now you are down half your destroyers, which, in, I mean, destroyers are everything. Battleships are nice, and you get big numbers. You're like, ooh, damage. But destroyers, destroyers are where the skill really gets put in. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you gotta just gotta rely on your teammates sometimes to really uh, make a play. Um, and I think some teammates did, some teammates didn't. But I mean, you gotta have confidence that they know what they're doing. It's it's ranked after all. How how poor could they be? <laughs> That's a joke. All right, so. Halfway through the match, obviously things weren't going so great at that point. Uh, Brindisi is right there in your face, um, kind of limping away. The other side of the map isn't doing so hot. What's going through your mind? Um, well, the first thing that went through my mind uh, with the fight with the Brindisi is I gotta kill this guy, I gotta kill him quick, and I gotta find a way to duel the Azumo. Um, that was what I was thinking. Um, because with that map, if you can reliably wrap around C and create a crossfire it's, uh, at B, I mean, that's just that... That basically, I don't want to say wins the game for you, but that goes a long way. Um, so when I saw that Brindisi... Uh, turn and obviously my first shot on him, the opening shot of the duel, uh, did not really uh, play out how I wanted to. I got five overpens and one penetration, which on a broadside cruiser, I mean, I'm basically a battleship. I should just nuke him right off the map. Um, but then he turned back in his smoke and, oh, man, Italian cruisers, 
to anybody who plays an Italian cruiser, know how the fuel smoke works, please. Don't don't be stupid. Um, but he turned back, and I was like, the only reason that an Italian cruiser would give me broadside is if he was torpedoing. So that was the very first thing that I thought of, and then I touched all of his uh, torpedoes that I guess he was relying on to kill me. Um, but <laughs> I don't know. I was really hyper focused um, on the Brindisi and then the Azumo. I didn't really even pay attention to what happened um, at the B cap um, until I saw uh, that DD uh, run by and I picked up the kill on that guy. Um, but then it was all Azumo. All right. So, what it was you against that Azumo you're talking about? And the Alaska's coming in, the Belfast is coming in, and that destroyer is behind you and crippled. At that moment, did you have any confidence that that was going to be a winnable fight? Or were you just thinking to yourself, man, this is probably going to go down as a loss. I might top my team, but this is probably going to go down as a loss. Was that, was that in your head at all? I mean, yeah, definitely. I mean, when <laughs> your entire team is dead, um, it's it's hard to have, hard to have hope. Um, but I don't know that Akazuki came in clutch uh he basically secured i don't want to say like my kill on the azumo because he's the one who really crushed him but uh that azumo i forced him out right into the akazuki and just he got torpedoed and boom all of a sudden uh i mean he died but i am a lot more confident in winning a two-on-two cruiser matchup than i am a uh two cruiser and a battleship matchup which at that point before the uh, uh, Akazuki launched torps. It basically was, um, but yeah, you just have to rely in ranked, and it's a little unfortunate. But you have to rely on your teammates just to make those plays. Um, and the Akazuki came in clutch. He got a plus one from me after the match. So yeah, he sort of lit my fire, I guess. So with you being energized on your Akazuki helping you out, that Belfast doesn't know how to use a smoke. You get him down. Uh, it's a lucky play, but you still have to take, kick, uh, take on an Alaska. That's a lot of ship to chunk through. Um, in that 1v1, did you have, did you have any idea when you first started as to how you were going to come out on top in that lineup? Or were you more interested about just taking it moment by moment and working it that way? Um... I feel like it's sort of a combination. Um, obviously, long-term goal of the fight. I mean, long-term, it lasted a few minutes. Um, but it's to win. Um, and in that moment, I have to like stack up little decisions to achieve the goal of winning. Um, and the first decision that I made um, that allowed, that gave me a medium from which to win through was not sitting there and eating the Belfast torpedoes. Um, I feel like sometimes... In Alaska, especially in Alaska, pushing right at you can be a bit of an imposing sight. But I knew if I froze um, and sort of just threw it in reverse and try to back up um, and let him rush me, uh, I would just get eaten by those torpedoes. Um, but I saw an opening, and I don't know. I, I guess the Alaska thought, I mean, certainly if you were in Alaska, you would think that that is a very winnable fight. Um, I don't. I would have tried if I was in the Alaska to disengage and just kite, but he wanted he wanted a brawl. So, I mean, if you're going to brawl what is basically, at that point, a German battleship at close range that also has torpedoes, um, be my guest. I would love to do that. Um, and that's exactly what he did. Um, yeah. And I was just, I was so happy. But I had to take a moment. Um, right after the Belfast went down, I was actually, once I realized, oh my god, this is a 1v1, I can win, I had to sort of take a breath and be like, alright, I can win, but if I go into this freaking out or panic, like I feel like so many players do, I just can't convert. So you just have to play level-headedly. So, you have broken down a lot about, you know how you dodge torps here and there, how you, you know, were focused on um, what was in front of you versus sometimes what was a little farther away. 
how you are positioning and handling your ship. So obviously a lot of thought goes through your head in the moment about what decisions you're making. Um, but stepping back and looking at that match um, in the mirror, rearview mirror, uh, what would you have done differently throughout that battle? Um, so obviously hindsight is twenty twenty, um, and just sort of looking at my decisions, um, and trying to find, and I think all players should do this. It's really easy with losses, um, for wins it's a little harder, but to take like an objective look at which decisions in the moment were functionally, uh, were functionally bad, but they needed to happen, um, and then versus the objective bad, poor decision-making that might have gotten you killed or might have put you in a poor position. Um, you commented on it a little bit in your uh, replay, um, in your commentary, but uh, when I killed the Izumo, uh, I slowed down originally to kill him, and then I sped back up. Uh, I really was not paying attention to where the Alaska was, uh, just in general. Um, I mean, I should have looked. I think I did look, um, and I predicted him to try and cap C because I put myself in other players' shoes. It helps me to predict what they were doing. And I predicted that he would go cap C um, and that he might leave the Belfast for a duel. So I had I turned out broadside uh, to get all my guns on the Belfast, and all of a sudden there is an Alaska at like 12 kilometers, which if you're showing broadside – in anything is pretty pretty bad and you would expect to eat massive damage um i was able to mitigate this a little bit with a last second turn in but really i should have gotten punished harder um for that play i think in retrospect Alaska was going to see it was an okay play but i really should have really should have thought it through um yeah uh just another moment um as and this is a bit like picky, but I mean, if I had gotten caught here, my my game would have been over and my clutch would have been denied. Um, last second, I hit the fur. I hit one torp um, on the Alaska, and I choose, especially um, in brawling ships, to go with widespread torpedoes and close range. I feel like while like maximum 100% damage if all of them like it, it's spread out a bit more so they're less likely to eat that massive like four torps you know dev strike but spreading them out it can cause a little bit of panic because it's not like I have one giant torpedo one giant torpedo spread I have to dodge now it's I have four individual torpedoes and each individual torpedo, I have to come up with a plan in order to dodge them. But when I was weaving back and forth at the very end, you could see in the replay I was like debating going for my other side rack of torps, uh, debating just staying in and just fighting them, and also trying to dodge and weave around some of his shells. You got to pick one. I feel like I had to pick one there, and my indecisiveness almost got me killed. I mean, if I went for the torps, I just got to go for the torps. I can't, like, tease them. Um, yeah. It has to be decisive. You have to take decisive action. Um, because if I just turn just a little bit, or really anything, if he had shot my superstructure while I was moving and given him more angle to get more shots through my superstructure, I mean, that's one dead agar. And Alaska, who has sweaty palms, but ultimately a star, um, so I just, I felt like I should have been more decisive, a little nitpicky, but it's the small decisions that really affect the outcome of a battle. All right. So as I had mentioned during my, uh, replay analysis, there were some ships on your team that were very subpar picks. Um, there was a Harbin that lost a very outright terrible fight that it took against the Alaska. Um, your Fletcher doesn't, didn't really do well and was kind of outclassed a bit by the uh by the friesland um it just really wasn't a great team lineup for you what ships would you rather have had by your side instead of what your team picked all right um 
generally, I don't really get upset or critique team lineups because if you're good in a ship, play it. That's that's what I think. Um, if like uh, there was a Harbin on our team, and if you are the best Harbin player um, on the North American server, play a Harbin and ranked. Um, that's what you should do. Uh, but if you're god awful, just don't, please. I beg you. Um, especially, I mean, Buffalo, with just the turret setup and what he was asking the ship to do with the bow in, he's got two turrets on the back that's just sitting there and his DPM is just sitting there wasted. Um, I feel like obviously you can't predict what map you're going to get, but I feel like you should bring ships that function for what you're asking them to do. Um, like my Ager, that functioned perfectly for what I asked it to do. I asked it to duel a Brindisi, then I asked it to duel a Battleship, and then I asked it to duel two cruisers. I have the capacity to do that in the ship that I brought. Um, the Akazuki, he was running around trying to get Torps. He has the capacity to do that in the ship that he brought. Um, Prince Ruprecht, um, from what I remember, he was out sort of open water. If you want to be open water, I say this like everybody has one, but bring a Musashi. Um, something like that. Bring an Azumo. Um, bring something that functions open water that you can use. But if you have a strong pushing battleship and you want to play like your Yamato, Brings bring something else or adapt to the play style of that ship. Um, yeah, I mean, that's my comment on team lineups. Well, boom, um, that was a lot of really, really good insight, and hopefully, the viewers took a lot away from that. Um, thank you for willing to be in interviewed about your game in the Aegir, and I appreciate you being able to talk with myself and give the viewers a good opportunity to learn more about how you perform in this ship and why this battle was so special to you. Yeah, man. Um, given the opportunity to uh, give a little bit of my thoughts on what was, I mean, I don't want to toot my own horn, but a bit of a stellar match, a nice comeback, uh, I find it really helpful. And, and I actually really like what you're doing um, with the uh, bit more of the commentary and then the analysis. I think um, a lot of the analysis is a bit lost these days on most YouTube content, and I appreciate that you uh, like to sort of give viewers a little something. Well, thank you for the kind words, Boom. And to all the viewers out there, once again, thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure to like and subscribe and hit the bell icon for to see the next video. And like I said, that Nuremberg video will be coming soon. Until next time, take care, Captains.